Saving views in S-Frame is a great way for us to work more efficiently with 3D models where we may want to refer back to a specific view or perspective without having to rotate every single time. Here's an example of a model that we've worked on previously. It's a 3D model. I have the entire thing selected and I'm looking at it within the Southwest isometric view. If I wanted to save this as a standard view, I could click on this camera button, the top left hand side of the view grids and properties toolbar. And if I click on this camera button, it's going to open up another dialog, this views dialog. Within the views dialog, I can enter a name for this view that will help me recognize and identify it when I want to refer back to it later. So I just called it standard 3D view, and I'm also going to say auto display views. And once I'm done, I can just press the add view button, and it's added this view to the list of views in my model and I can press OK to save this addition. Now I can see that this view is located within my model. And I'm just going to bring back my aerial window. I can rotate my model in any way. And if I want to ever bring back that same standard 3D view, I just go and select it from this list, and it's going to be brought back. Now currently, we're using the global coordinate system, this global system here. And I can select my base grid that I defined earlier. So I have a base grid that lines up with the joints in the XY plane of my global coordinate system. And I can actually raise this grid to different locations within my model. And the global coordinate system will go with it. So if I press this translate grid and UCS up one story, the UCS and grid will move up an additional story. Now I can click on this 2D toggle button that we've looked at in the past. And it's just sliced the model so it's only looking at that one set of joints and members within that 2D plane. And that's the XY plane of my user coordinate system. I'm going to go to the top view. And with the top view selected here, we're looking at the floor plan. And we can turn on the display of the joint numbers and the member numbers if we'd like. Now this might be a useful view for me to have uh, when working with this model. So I can press the view button again to save this view. And this view I'm just going to call 2D floor plan and grid. I'm going to turn on the auto display views again. And we also have this option with the 2D view selected where it says work only with the objects that fall within an XY plane of current UCS plus or minus delta Z. And delta Z I've set to 0 0.1 meters. I'm going to press the add view button and it's added that view to the model and I'm going to press OK to save it. Now we can switch between our views if we like. I can go back to the standard 3D view. And you notice that when I do this, I don't have the joint and member numbers. I don't have that grid that I was looking at before. And if I go back to the 2D floor planning grid, I have everything that I would have had before. Any changes I make in this view will be reflected in the other view, but the view itself won't change. So in this way, you can see that a useful view may take a bit of time to create, but it's certainly very useful if you use it often. Now, I'm going to actually switch to uh, the front elevation view. So I'm going to change my user coordinate system and look at the wall user coordinate system. And with my arrow window here, I'm just going to select the front view this time. And I'll change my grid, not for the base grid, because that's for the bottom, but I'm going to use the wall grid. And I'm going to save this view. Um, I'm just going to turn off the member numbers, though, just to keep this nice and clean. And I'll go Save View. And for this view here, I'm going to just call this one Front Elevation 2D. And I can make this Delta Z a little bit smaller here. So I'm going to go with 0 0.0001 meters. And I'll press Add View. Oh, added it twice there. I'll delete one of them and press OK. And we can again switch between the different views as much as we like.
Now, if we select one of our views, let's say the 2D floor plan and grid view, and we can move between the different levels. So I can go, right now I'm on the second level, and I might want to stay here, but I can press this translate up to look at a different level if I wanted to. You can see the joint and member numbers changing. I want to be on the second floor. And I'm going to activate the member definition tool. And with the member definition tool selected here, we actually have the option to define patterns uh, that we can work with. So with the 2D patterns, I can define a cross brace. So I can go to the cross braces. And I can actually define cross braces within this 2D view and the grid. To do that, I can just left click and drag my mouse with the member definition tool selected. And it draws in cross braces in between each one of these grid lines. Maybe hard to see the grid because it's lining up with these beams, but they're there. And you can see I actually have this base grid selected. Now let's change our view to the 2D front elevation. And we're going to add some bracing members to the front elevation. This time I'm going to do it using the two joints method. So I'm not going to actually use any 2D pattern. And the two joints method here, I'm just going to left click my mouse and draw in some of these. Now finally, we can switch to the standard 3D view. And we can see what effect that had on our model. So we added the vertical braces from the elevation view, and we added the horizontal braces within the floor plan view, just to the second floor. 